I've spent a lot of time working on a Discord bot for my Learn, Build, Teach Discord community. Link below if you wanna check that out and join. But I needed a place to deploy it and I had a few different options, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how I deployed my Discord bot to Linode. So as I'm thinking about where I could host this Discord bot, I need somewhere where I could run a full node backend because of basically the socket connections that it takes to receive and handle these Discord messages. I'll tell you about that in a second. So before we actually dive into this, I wanna make sure that you know that as part of this video, which is sponsored by Linode, I've got a unique link in here that will get you $100 credit in Linode. So you can do exactly what I'm doing and you can uh, basically have your bill covered depending on what size of uh, Linode you use. Uh, for several, several months. So if you want to follow along, you can take advantage of this credit. There'll be a link below in the description and you can absolutely do that. So before we actually get into the node process, let's take a look at uh, a few different things in here about the Discord bot itself. One, here is the uh, source code for this bot and I can do an NPM run dev in here. And if I open up Discord to my test, uh, to my test channel, I can say, hey, this is a test. And you can see that this bot is listening and capturing every message that comes in. So it gets notified on every message. So that's this. Uh, that's the source code for the bot. That's what we're gonna need to deploy. There'll be a link to this uh, in the description below as well. So if you wanna look at the actual Discord bot itself, you can do that. If you're curious about how I built the bot, I used uh, Discord JS, which is an open package on NPM, and then also a package that I created on top of that called uh, Quick Chat Bot. And it's an abstraction. Let me go back to where I should have been. Quick Chat Bot NPM. This is an abstraction uh, on top of bots. So you can use this with Twitch and uh, Twitch and Discord for uh, handling messages. So that's what I did. And basically the way this works is you create these different command files and it registers uh, the, the framework itself will pick up those commands from those files and then kind of register them to handle messages that come in from either Discord or Twitch. So it's pretty cool. So those are the two things there. You've got the link to the source code if you wanna look into it. Uh, you've got a link to the Discord, not the Discord, the discount if you uh, want the coupons from Linode. And then we can go ahead and dive in. So after you sign up with uh, with your account, you will put a credit card down, but you'll have this $100 credit here. Uh, you'll be taken to kind of the, the main dashboard here and you want to create a Linode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, go to their marketplace and they have uh, an already configured mean stack. So mean is MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node. So basically what that means is, no pun intended, is that there will be Node and MongoDB already installed. Now this uh, particular bot does save records in a database, but it saves it in Airtable. So I don't necessarily need Mongo itself, but since this comes pre-configured with Node, I figured it was good to go. So I'm gonna select mean there. And uh, there's lots of other images in here for different things that you might want. Postgres, RabbitMQ, Reddit. So you'll see some familiar technologies in here. So maybe give a look to find uh, if there's anything that resonates with you. Uh, I've got Debian 9 as my operating system. My region is going to be Atlanta, Georgia is close to me here in Memphis, Tennessee. And then what's my plan? I'm going to go for just the smallest one here a month, which is $5 a month. Now, I do want to reiterate, you can host uh, some applications on other platforms for free. But because this thing gives you uh, your own kind of box, you can run as many things on it as you want. So if you might if you might have a limit on another service of you can only run two applications or something, I'm making that up. Uh, here, whatever you're paying for, it's your box. You can run whatever you want. So you get full control and then you can run as many things on it as you want. So you could deploy different, uh, different applications. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as, uh, as this uh, $5 tier. Again, we've got the $100 credit. And then I've got the uh, label, I don't need any tags. And then I'm gonna create a root password in here. And uh, I think that's good. So let's go ahead and create this thing. And after this thing is created, what we'll do is we will SSH into this. So this, this video is getting a little bit more into like the stuff that I did at uh, my career in FedEx, doing really IT stuff, doing SSHs. Uh, I'll talk you through that and show you how that works. And then uh, we'll take a look at um, getting the things installed that we need to. So the one thing that I'm going to reference is um, in the getting started with Linode, there is some instructions. You have a link to this below on how to do the SSH. So we'll we'll basically kind of follow follow this. We'll make sure that our packages and things are um, updated on the machine so that make sure it's up to date and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, we should be able to SSH. So let's go back to this Linode tab and you can copy 
uh, this little SSH thing here. What this says is you want to secure shell, secure shell. Uh, you want to securely uh, access that server and you're saying you want to go in as the root user and then uh, it's at this IP address. That's kind of the domain basically. And I've got a new hyper tab in here and I can just paste in this SSH. So it's going to say, all right, this is the first time you're SSHing to this box. So do you want to continue? Uh, yes, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, then it's going to ask for the password. This is that password that I set in the tenant configuration. And when I get here, uh, now I'm actually logged into this box. And you can see if I do a who am I command, uh, you'll see I am root. If I do a PWD, uh, which is the uh, present, present working directory, uh, it will say I'm in slash root. And you'll see some files in here as well. Now, one of the things to note, if I go back to uh, the browser, this should have installed. We did a mean install, so it should have Node and MongoDB. Now, when I first checked this, I did a Node-V, I think maybe too early when I first did this last night, and it didn't show me my version. So make sure you give a few minutes to have all those things uh, get uh, get completely finalized, I guess. But I've got Node installed, and I've got uh, Mongo-V, or I can do Mongo, and you'll see the shell, I think. There we go. Yeah. So it's got Mongo and Node already installed, which all I really need for my application is Node. So let's go back. With Node installed, we can uh, scroll down in these instructions. I've got a link to this uh, below as well. And let's open up this connect to your little node via SSH. And let's start with a software update. So on Debian, we can use apt-get and we can say, go ahead and update that and upgrade it. So I'm just gonna copy in this command it's going to go and do some things. It looks like that is good. It was already had probably the, the latest releases of patches and things like that. So you have a link to this one too. Uh, but that command in there, app get update and app get upgrade will take care of uh, making sure everything is up to date. Now, the other thing I need is to install Git. So I'm going to install Git on Debian. Let's just see what we can find in here. How to install Git on Debian 10. That sounds good. I think we're on Debian 9, but hopefully it'll be the same. So after we've done our sudo apt update, uh, we can do a sudo app install git. And cool, I think that works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a directory. So make dir, and we'll make a code directory. I'll cd into that uh, code directory. And then now I wanna clone the code from my repository. Now, if you remember, you have a link to that below, so you could actually do the same thing if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to grab the clone URL, so this one here, and then do a git clone of this repository. And this will go and grab all the code. If I now uh, ls uh, is a, a listing, ls is list, and then la is a format, so that's how I can view it this way. I'm going to cd into learn build teach discord bot. I'm going to run an npm install. So the code is there. It has the package.json there, but now it needs to run an install to grab all the dependencies that are listed in the package.json. That only took a few seconds. Now, here's the one thing I also need to do is I need to add in a touch env uh, file. Now, you could add environment variables in your system. Um, I'm just kind of doing this for ease of use for myself, but I'm going to create a, uh, a .env file with the touch command, if I do an ls-la, you see that that .env there is now, or that .env is there now. And I'm gonna open this up. This this may be very intimidating, but I'm gonna open this up with vi. So vi.env. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in all of my uh, secret keys and things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, take a second and copy those, paste them in here, and then after you get done with that, if you're in VI, you can do uh, colon and then WQ for write quit. So it'll write it, which will save the file, then quit it. All right. Anyway, all right. I'm going to go grab that and then I'll copy it in. All right. So I've got those environment variables copied in. What I should be able to do now is just do an NPM uh, run start or NPM start. I could do NPM start with everything installed. This should start listening. I'm running this in test mode just so I don't... Um, just so I don't mess with the thing that's actually deployed. But what should happen now is if I now send a message in the test channel, uh, like, hey, I did this on Discord on the other screen, you see that pop up, hey, 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 now you see it again. So this thing is now running on Linode. It has a persistent connection to uh, Discord to be listening for these messages. As those messages come in, if it runs a specific uh, command, then it will do something. I think, let's see, actually, if this test command works. 
test command. Uh, if it, if you send the test commands, which is just bang test, it's going to respond back with test. Uh, pretty cool. Or it's going to log out test to show that it's working. So it's receiving messages and it's able to handle um, handle the actual commands that come in. Now, here's the really cool thing about this. If we go back and look at the IP address here, as part of this code, uh, and I guess I could just show this to you in here, uh, I'm actually running an express server and it has a ping endpoint. I've updated this to Git, so it'll be a Git. But uh, so anyway, so what we can do is we can go to the uh, IP and then uh, colon three three or three zero zero one. That's a port that I've listed in my environment variables, and then do slash ping. And now you see that I'm actually hitting that endpoint that's responding back with hello world. So not only is this thing listening uh, for those messages coming from Discord, it's also its own uh, its own IP address in here. We could add, like we could update the host names and make that more human readable and that sort of stuff. I don't think we need to now, but we've got this thing deployed. It's listening for messages and it has this endpoint that's running. Now here's, here's the problem though. The way we ran this, if I were to, um, if I were to, I guess I was going to say, like, if I were to get out of this, if I just stop this, obviously, uh, this endpoint is no longer going to work, right? So what if I want to run my application and still be able to do other things on that server or get out of that, um, get out of this SSH? You don't want to have to stay SSH in there. So what we can do is we can run our start command and then run this in the background. So npm start ampersand, ampersand, and I don't know what that is. Uh, we can run this, and what we can do now is I could even exit out of my SSH. So I'm completely out of SSH. I'm back uh, in my browser here. If I refresh, that thing is still running, and it's because I ran it in the background. So that's a really cool thing here is that we can uh, have a start command that will run that thing in the background. And there's lots of additional things that we could potentially do of adding, uh, adding logging in here. We could look at using uh, P2, I believe it is. Uh, P2 is a service that will run your node applications and then continue to restart it if it crashes. So right now, if our application were to crash, it's done. I would have to go back in and restart it. If you use P2, actually, this is not right. PM2, let's see. Node runner, I have to look at PM2. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, maybe PM2. Let's look at this. Daemon process manager that will help you manage. And yeah, I think that's what it is. So this thing will help. Uh, restart if it needs to. Um, anyway, so you could do a little bit around that. You could also do a little bit of extra logging because right now our logs are just going to what was in the terminal. But if I'm not logged into the terminal to watch those logs, I need somewhere for them to persist. So I could add logs uh, with something to like file storage or something like that. So in just a few minutes, we've got an entire application deployed to Linode, a Discord bot. It's listening for commands. It's listening for messages from Discord, as well as it runs an express server. So it has that ping endpoint that I can test. So pretty cool. Hopefully uh, that made sense to you. If you're uh, interested in trying this out yourself, again, remember that uh, you've got a link to the $100 discount code for you to use, as well as if you're interested in joining the Learn, Build, Teach Discord community, there's a link below to that as well. So you can come and hang out. Uh, you can use the bot. And if you're interested, you can even add code back to the bot. If you have any features or ideas, I would love to see those. So hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.